Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Del Racing Racing Strategy Guide from Dragon Trail Seaside in the Group 4 Machinery. We've got 10 laps to get round this infamous course with its chicane of souls, death trap. Tire wear is at times 6, fuel is at times 2, we've just got the racing hard tyres available. There is a mandatory pit stop in this one, BOP is on, damage is light, it's a rolling start. Slipstream is real and for your settings allowed it is the brake balance, the anti-roll bars, the compression and the expansion, which is a reasonable compromise compared to having too many options with the settings available, if you ask me. But yeah, it's been a while since we've been at Dragon Trail Seaside for Daily Race C, certainly in my memory. Uh, so yeah, I kind of went into this race a little bit, a little bit blind, because I probably haven't really driven a lap around here since the last time we visited it, but it's a... Yeah, I like this course, but it's definitely one of my weaker ones in the game, because, of course, with the... The chicane of souls, or the chicane of death, whatever you want to call it. I am such a coward through there, and it's so vital to your lap time to push the car, to push the limits, that you know you can gain half a second on the run down to the last corner if you are super brave through the chicane, which I tend not to be. Survival always been my first instinct when it comes to racing. But as always, we are in the eight o'clock race here, and we have picked the Aston Martin. Uh, V8 Vantage for this one. It is a V8 Vantage, isn't it? I'm doubting myself now. Anyway, the Aston Martin Group 4 car, you know what it is as we head down to turn one here. And as usual, a lot of the usual suspects that you see in these daily race guides are in this one as well, including Tigney, just in front of us. Some of the other TCR boys as well. Uh, we've got Blue Racer, we've got Apex Twin behind us, who's Tonic from the livestream chat, so nice to be in a race with uh, Tonic once again, he's in the GTR. And there's a good selection of cars here as well. We've got Tigney and Veyron, we've got Supras, there's Citroens, I believe there's a Ferrari, there's a McLaren, a Viper as well. You always get a little bit of variety in this first race of the week. Uh, now I, as I said, had not done a great deal of practice and this is not a great course to go in without too much practice because uh, there is a lot of technical corners in this track, or more technical than you might think. And you can see we are now starting to drop behind Tigney very early on in this one. But the concertina effect of the pack up ahead means they're not going to pull too far ahead of us on this opening lap. Now, this race basically comes down to a decision on whether you want to change the tyres or whether you don't want to change the tyres. And as this race unfolds, we shall talk more and more about that. But as we come to the end of lap one, and that is one survival of the Chicane of Souls, and it looks like everybody up ahead has survived relatively intact as well, which is good to see, although they are going free wide. But people are going into the inside of the track there, because as I thought, a lot of drivers are going to peel off and make their pit stop at the end of lap one. So they're obviously not going to change the tyres for this race. Now, as a relatively short race, we are on the hard tyres, but the tyre wear is up at times six, and there's quite a lot of high-speed corners on this track that do put quite a lot of load through the tyres on the left-hand side of the car. So it'll be interesting to see as the video unfolds how that tyre wear manifests itself. Now, coming through the chicane of Souls here for the third time, we survived it, but we certainly came through it pretty slowly. We survived it better than the finished driver, let's just say that, but it has allowed Tonic to go down the inside of us. <laughs> Wait do you see the back of Tonic's car here, did make me laugh, uh, in the Nissan GTR. Uh, yeah, I like that livery Tonic, nice one, that did give me a smile on my face when I, I seen you going down the inside and let you pass there. It did look faster than me to be fair, so uh, uh, when I had the opportunity to go for the overtake, we did not fight that too much. And we took a slipstream of Tonic up until the end of lap five, where we decided to peel off into the pitch. Now, do be ca careful at the pit lane here. That white line comes up very quickly, so you need to make sure you're on the inside of the track. No late dives into the pits on this one. Now, I decided I was going to change the tyres. I had done a test pit stop before the race. Uh, I knew the non-tyre change was 1.6 seconds, but normally changing the tyres on Group 4 can be pretty quick. So I thought, you know what, let's change the tyres, see how long it takes for the, the purposes of the video. And you can see it's 4.6 seconds stationary time. So that's going to cost you 3 seconds to change the tyres. Now, is it going to be worth it? Let's find out as the race goes on. But all said and done, your pit loss with a tyre change is going to be 20 seconds, or just a shade under 20 seconds and to not change the tyres, just a shade under 17 seconds. So three seconds saved by not changing the tyres. Fuel, no issue, of course. 
Here's the problem though with changing the tyres. Uh, we came out behind the Swiss driver here in the Citroen that's not changed the tyres and we've got Shadow up ahead in a Supra who's also not changed the tyres and overtaking generally is pretty difficult at this track. It's pretty difficult in Group 4 and you know what it's like in Gran Turismo. People fight very hard for their positions, you know. Nobody kind of oh, rolls the red carpet out for you. Neither should they, to be fair. But yeah, people really do fight quite hard in Gran Turismo for these positions. And as you can see, we are embroiled in a battle with a couple of drivers who haven't changed the tyres. Now we're clearly quicker than both of them. Because uh, I'll show you their tyre wear at the end of the race. But you certainly if you don't change the tyres, you do start to suffer a little bit towards the end of the race. Some drivers more than others, some cars more than others. But you can see, we should be doing like low 47s here with the fresh tyres. We have 48 7 there. Uh, for lap 8 and yeah just just couldn't quite get the move done there the Swiss driver goes into the back of Shadow there backs out of it that does get us ahead of the Citroen we're straight on to the back of the Supra as well uh, we do get a bit of an opportunity down into turn 1 here but Blue Racer who I believe maybe had a lot of an incident for the chicane has now became part of the battle and we're going to go not quite free wide but uh, down the outside here of turn one is going to be very difficult indeed, especially when we're not quite alongside into the braking zone. And yeah, we're just losing time hand over fist. A 48 0 there when we should possibly be maybe even venture into the 46s. Uh, the time is just disappearing. This was our best opportunity to go for the overtake, uh, but we kind of had to, we, we, we took it a little bit too cautious. And what you're about to see here is not for the faint hearted, by the way. Uh, you're not going to see this too often as drivers go side by side through the chicane of souls. Well, not quite side by side because I did decide that backing out here and surviving the race and finishing a P9 was better than trying to go through the second part side by side. Uh, and you can see Torix up there in P7 at around about four seconds, four and a half seconds ahead of us. Who we were right behind, obviously, when we made the pit stop, but the Tonic has uh, pitted on lap nine, not changed the tyres and obviously benefited from that because we got so embroiled in battle here. But it was a good race, it was good fun, it was good, good battle and it was hard but clean and uh, we bring the car home in P9. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a tough one because you're definitely faster with the tyres and I'll show you the tyre wear here as we kind of jump to the next part of the video. 18 minutes 16 your finishing time, we'll definitely scope for another lap in this one maybe. It would have made the sort of choice between changing the tyres and not changing the tyres a little bit more difficult but you can see uh, Laporte never changed the tyres in the Supra, Tigney in the Veyron had bad tyres, uh, Shelty here in the Lamborghini very interesting looking at the tyres there, Shelty has a little bit of a, a tyre whisperer, I had to, actually had to go and check to see if he changed the tyres, McGann Trophy certainly getting into that 50%, Supra the front tyres here definitely starting to suffer, Tonic in the GTR the front tyres in the four wheel drive car suffering as you would expect, there's Shadow with the Supra that we were battling with there's my tyres, obviously, we changed them. Uh, Blue Racer and the Ferrari would just tend to chew the tyres up a little bit. Uh, the Citroen there, very good on the tyres, as you would expect. No tyre change there. Uh, I'm not sure if that Ferrari changed the tyres or not. The Mustang chewing through the front tyres and Hoxton in the GTR chewing through the front tyres as well. So my kind of gut feeling is that if you had a clean run, you would probably be marginally faster changing the tyres. It's not going to be much because three seconds is quite a lot to make up uh, in five laps, let's be honest. But it would be very, very close if you were to get a clean run, no traffic, no interruptions uh, to your race. I think it would be very close between the two of them. However, it is Group 4. The racing tends to be very close together. Three seconds to give up to another driver is a lot uh, in a race like this because it will cost you certainly in a lot of the, the higher splits it's going to cost you three four positions on the track possibly and as you've seen how difficult it is to overtake there eh, you're just going to lose more time overall so i think my gut instinct suggests don't change the tires because it's just too costly if you're kind of in like the mid pack or towards the back but maybe lower down if you're really really bad on tyre wear definitely consider that tyre change you may be able to make the positions back up but it's very very close between the two of them uh, but I just think the nature of the racing in group 4 how close the racing is how hard it is to overtake you probably have to go for the non-tyre change 
to be truly competitive in this one. But hopefully the video has been useful in some way, shape or form. Do join me for a live stream or two later on in the week. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.